when you talk about computation, how do you think about it? Do you think purely on just um, the the switching, or do you think something a little bit larger scale, a circuit taken together, performing the basic arithmetic uh, operations that are then required to do the kind of computation that makes up a computer? Because when we talk about the speed of computation, is it boiled down to the basic switching, or is there some bigger picture that you're thinking about? Well, all right. So maybe we should disambiguate. There are a variety of different kinds of computation. I don't pretend to be an expert in the theory of computation or anything like that. I guess it's important to, to differentiate, though, between digital logic, which represents information as a series of bits, binary digits, which, you know, uh, you can think of them as zeros and ones or whatever. Usually they correspond to a physical system that has two very well separated states. And then other kinds of computation, like we'll get into more the way your brain works, which it is, I, I think, indisputably processing information. But where the computation begins and ends is not anywhere near as well defined. It, it doesn't depend on these two levels, here's a zero, here's a one. It's There's a lot of gray area that's usually referred to as analog computing. Um, also, in, in conventional digital computers or um, digital computers in, in general, you have a concept of what's called arithmetic depth, which is jargon that basically means how many sequential operations are performed to turn an input into an output. And those kinds of computations in, in digital systems are, are highly serial, meaning that data streams, they don't branch off too far to the side. Y you do. You have to pull some information over there and access memory from here and stuff like that. But by and large, the, the computation proceeds in a, in a serial manner. It's not that way in the brain. In the brain, you're always drawing information from different places. It's much more network-based computing. Neurons don't wait for their turn. They fire when they're ready to fire. And so it's it's asynchronous. So one of the other things about a digital system is you're performing these operations on a clock. And that's a, that's a crucial aspect of it. Get rid of a clock in a digital system, nothing makes sense anymore. The brain has no clock. It, it builds its own timescales based on its internal activity. So, so you can think of the brain as kind of uh, like this, like network computation, where it's actually really trivial, simple computers, uh, just a huge number of them, and they're networked. Uh, I would together. say it is complex, sophisticated little processors, and there's sure, a huge number sure. of them. Neurons Sorry. are not. No, are no not offense. Simple. I don't mean to offend you. Sure, no, they're no. very complicated and beautiful, and yeah, but we often oversimplify them. Yes, they're actually like there's computation happening within a neuron. Right. right. So I, I would say to think of a, a transistor as the building block of a digital computer is accurate. You use a few transistors to make your logic gates. You build up more. You build up processors from logic gates and things like that. So you can think of a transistor as a fundamental building block, or you can think of, as we get into more uh, highly parallelized architectures, you can think of a processor as a fundamental building block. To make the analogy to the neuro side of things, a neuron is not a transistor. A neuron is a, is a processor. Yeah. It has synapses. Even synapses are not transistors, but they are more, um, they're lower on the information processing hierarchy in a sense. They do bulk of the computation, but neurons are entire uh, processors in and of themselves that can take in many different kinds of inputs on many different spatial and temporal scales and produce many different kinds of outputs so that they can perform different computations in different contexts. So this is where enters this distinction between computation and communication. So you can think of neurons performing computation and the inter the networking, the interconnectivity of neurons is communication between neurons. And you see this with very large server systems. I've been, I mentioned offline, I've been talking to Jim Keller, whose dream is to build giant computers that, uh, you know, the, the bottom like there's often the communication between the different yes. pieces of the computing.